Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Faith and Friends. I'm so glad to have you joining us. Um, before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that we did have our mission trip this past weekend down to Missouri. Uh, it went really well. Uh, thank you for all your prayers. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about it, uh, this Saturday evening and Sunday during our church services, we are going to be having some youth share a little bit of their experiences uh, while we kind of talk about our vision for youth ministry. So I encourage you to come to worship or hopefully if you can't be there in person, you'll be able to join us online. Uh, again, just an opportunity to hear a little bit about what we did this past weekend in Missouri um, and just see what our vision is for the youth ministry going forward. So, uh, yeah, I hope you'll join us for that. Uh, otherwise, just kind of continuing to work towards the start this fall. I know schools are kind of all over the place, but we're doing our best to put together a program and put together some uh, events for youth. And, uh, yeah, we're excited about what's going to be coming up and, you know, just praying that our world kind of gets back to normal so we can uh, do the same with our, our youth ministry and, and what we've got going forward. So, uh yeah, with that, why don't we uh, jump into our text for tonight and um, begin with a word of prayer. So, dear Lord, we thank you for this time to look into your word. We thank you for uh, just the opportunity to connect uh, even uh, through the internet. Uh, just help your word to speak to us tonight. In your name, amen. So tonight we are uh, continuing with John chapter 16. And it's been a couple of weeks, so I kind of want to remind you where we were at. Uh, leading up to this, Jesus has really just been teaching his disciples. This is kind of the last big teaching that Jesus has for his disciples. It's going to not be too long until they head to the garden. Jesus is arrested and, you know, it moves on with the rest of, of Good Friday. So this is really, he's just been teaching his disciples about who he is and what he's come to do. Um so we kind of left off with Jesus basically telling his disciples that there's going to be times when the world is going to hate you. And that's okay. That's what comes from following me. Um, so that's kind of where we pick up today. Uh, again, we're on John chapter 16. So if you've got a Bible there at home, I'd encourage you to open that up and uh, follow along with us as we just continue our way through John. So, uh, starting with John chapter 16, verse 1. Uh, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who, who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have known the Father. They have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. So Jesus kind of continues, uh, well, <laughs> with a little bit of bad news that it's going to be tough for them. Um, you know, he, he tells them that they're going to be put on the synagogue. Basically, they're going to be uh, excommunicated, kicked out of the church as they knew it at that time. And it says, it goes so far as to say that the time is coming when anyone who kills you would think he is offering up a service to God. So Jesus here is not focused really on the immediate future where he knows that his disciples are going to go astray, but on further out, on years out, um, you know, we know now that uh, at least 10 of the disciples would end up being martyred for their faith. And, and Jesus knows this. And Jesus is a, in a way preparing them that this is what lies ahead for them. Um, but to not lose faith because uh, as he goes into shortly, he's going to be with them. Um, so continuing then, uh, verse, verse five, uh, we're going to see how Jesus, uh, is going to really talk about the Holy Spirit that he's going to be sending to them. So, uh, 16, continuing at verse five, Jesus says, now I am going to him who sent me yet. None of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you're filled with grief, but I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, ah, sorry, we're going to pause there. So uh, actually, Jesus kind of starts this off with a little bit of a weird statement. You know, he says, 
none of you asked me where are you going? Uh, I think it's a little odd that he says this because if you remember back in our last couple of evenings when we've gone, been going through this, the disciples multiple times have been questioning him about, you know, where are you going? Why are you leaving us alone? What's going on? And they just don't, they don't understand. So this is maybe in some ways a sign that they're a little bit starting to get it, that they finally understand that he is going to die. Um, uh, but he says that this, this is a good thing. It is our advantage that he is going to go away. Uh, and this they don't really understand, but it is going to be explained by, by Jesus himself here in just a, just a few verses. Um, so continuing verse 8, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit coming to them, Jesus says, When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. So really what Jesus is doing here is uh, explaining what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's explaining the work of the Holy Spirit, and he explains it in three ways. He says the Holy Spirit is going to come to convict us of our sin. It's through the Holy Spirit that we acknowledge that we, we sin, we do bad, we are separated from God. He says the Holy Spirit is going to convince us in terms of righteousness. It's through the Holy Spirit that we come to believe in God. It's through the Holy Spirit that we can believe in the death of Jesus. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we have righteousness. We have faith. And then finally, it says the Holy Spirit is going to convince us in regards to judgment. And what this means is that the Holy Spirit is going to convince us of what Jesus has done for us. You know, just... Coming very shortly, Jesus is going to die. God's judgment is going to be poured out on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is going to work in us to help us understand that, to convince us that that is what had happened. Uh, and this is really, I think, a great uh, explanation of what the Holy Spirit does. Because a lot of times, you know, we understand Jesus, we understand God the Father, but the Holy Spirit is sometimes harder to understand and Jesus is just laying it right out here for him. Uh, so he continues, verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will take from what is mine and will make it known to you. So this, in another way, sums up the work of the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus is saying is that the Holy Spirit is going to take what belongs to Jesus and give it to us. He's going to give us Jesus's... Uh, he's going to give us Jesus's life, his joy, his love. Um, sorry, who is it? Joyce, uh, I'm reading from the NIV. Uh, he asked me to reread verse 11. Uh, verse 11 in mine says, uh, and in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Um, so that's, that's how my version translates it. Um, and again, again, what that, what that's saying is that the prince of this world, uh, being, well, the devil is going to stand condemned and, uh, you know, Jesus is going to die to condemn the devil in a way. Um, so, uh, <laughs> sorry, I lost my spot now. That's right. Uh, so looking, looking further on at verse 15, Jesus is saying that what the Holy Spirit does for us is he gives to us what belongs to Jesus. He gives us the love that Jesus have. He gives us the life that Jesus has. He gives us the joy that Jesus had. This is why earlier it said that Jesus is going to leave us, but it will be for our advantage. And this is why it's for our advantage, so that we can have what Jesus had. Um, and this is what Jesus is going to talk about. Oh, uh, my apologies. There's a... <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a video you might, you might see this weekend if you come join us. Not sure why it just started playing, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Sorry, uh, jumping back in here at John chapter 16, uh, verse 17. Um, it says, Some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no longer, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. So here again we see that the disciples are still kind of clueless. And, and this makes sense to us because we know what's going to happen. You know, when Jesus says he's going to go away for a little while, it means he's, he's going to die. The disciples are going to flee from him. But when he says he's going to come back, we also know that Jesus is going to be resurrected. Jesus is not going to be gone for that long before the disciples see him again. Uh, and Jesus, being who he is and God, knows what they want to ask. Verse 19 says, Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So Jesus here is talking to them in this in this metaphor of, of childbirth. Um, obviously, I'm a man. I've never given birth, but I have been present when my wife has given birth. And there is obviously great discomfort. But all that is, it's, it's not forgotten so much as overwhelmed by the joy of a new child. And this is what Jesus is talking about. There is going to be pain to come. But that pain is overwhelmed by the joy that we have. In, in life through Jesus. The pain is not, not gone, but just uh, completely overcome by this great joy. Um, so verse 22, So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. And that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, but my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. So again, Jesus is just explaining to them that they will have a joy that they can't quite understand yet. A joy in uh, being able to overcome the troubles of this world. A joy that uh, lasts forever, that goes beyond whatever they may experience in this world. Verse 25. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about the Father. And that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world to go back to the Father. Uh, so Jesus is... Uh, explaining that he has been speaking in, in metaphors, really. You know, if you remember what we've talked about, we've, he's talked about how, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, a house with many rooms. He's talked about how uh, he is the vine and we are the branches. And just, just now he's talked about how uh, his coming will be like childbirth. He's using all these metaphors, but he tells them that very soon he is going to speak plainly. And I think what he's talking about is simply the cross, the cross speaks very plainly. It is uh, very evident in the cross what Jesus is saying. He's saying, I'm giving up my life for you so that, be or because I love you. And it can't be any clearer than that. Um, Joyce, you asked what words are, are figurative. Uh, like we talked about, uh, Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven as uh, basically a house with many rooms and there's all rooms for us. And Jesus talked earlier about how he is the vine and we are the branches and we are connected to him um, through the, the lifeblood that he has. And, and just now he talked about uh, the, uh, the pain of childbirth giving way to joy and how we will have joy when Jesus has gone through the pain of death uh, for our salvation. Um, so after Jesus tells them that he's, he's done speaking plainly. He's going to show his love by dying for us. Um, 
they're still they're still confused. Uh, verse twenty nine. Then Jesus' disciples said, "Now you are speaking clearly without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things, and that you do not even need to, and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God." You believe at last, Jesus answered. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think the disciples in, in this sense, they they want to think they understand, but I think we've all been in that place where we, uh, in some ways, fake understanding. You know, someone asks us, do you, do you get it? And we went, oh yeah, of course, of course. And in our heads, we're like, I just don't understand what's going on. And I think it's pretty clear that's where the disciples are at. Uh, this verse 31, where Jesus says, you believe at last, Jesus answered. Um, other ways is translating, do you now believe? So I think this is really stated better with a question. You believe at last? Um, Jesus is, <laughs> I don't want to say mocking them, but really pushing them because they, they don't understand. And Jesus continues, verse 32. But a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each of you to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Uh, and this is Jesus reinforcing the idea that uh, they don't understand. Because if they did, they, they wouldn't leave him, as they are sure to do shortly. But we know that they are going to scatter when uh, people come to arrest Jesus, that they're not going to stick with him. But he tells us that no matter what, his Father is with them. Um... Joyce, you're asking, whatever you ask of the Father, he will give to me. Is that figurative? Uh, no, it, it's not figurative. I think the, the reality is that, um, see, Jesus says, uh, whatever you ask in my name. So what this is saying is that, you know, if we ask uh, God with true and intent, um, he, he says he'll give it to us. And I think the reality is that a lot of times when we ask things of God, we are we are not asking them in Jesus' name. And what that means is that we are not asking them in alignment with God's will. Um, and that that's not to say that God is always going to give us exactly what we want, because he won't. I mean, that should be obvious in all of our lives. I'm sure we've all asked God for things at, at various times, and we haven't gotten exactly what we wanted. And... Uh, yeah, Joyce, I think you're right. Yes, is this where prosperity preachers go wrong? I, it is. Because they, you know, what they preach is, you know, if you believe in God, if you ask God for the right things, you will always get them. And that's simply not the truth. Because the truth is that God knows better than us. And if we're asking for things that are not for our good, he's, he's not going to give them to us. Um, and sometimes God just says no. And we have to, to live with that because we just have to trust that God is God and he knows things that we don't. Um, all right, just one more verse here. Verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you those things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus gives us this comforting thought that in him we have peace, that he's overcome the troubles. And this is not to say that we're not going to have troubles. Obviously, we, we will still have troubles in our lives. We have troubles every day. What Jesus is saying is not that he has removed the troubles, but that when we move into him, our troubles don't matter because we have peace. As Jesus says, he has overcome the world. And in the book of John, this is really the last teaching that Jesus has for his disciples. After this, he goes to the garden, he prays, and um, he's arrested and um, goes to the cross. And this is a, a comforting thought to leave his disciples with. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the thought that Jesus leaves with his disciples and that Jesus leaves with us. That he has overcome the world, and because of that, we have peace. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this peace that you have given us. Help us to remember that you have overcome the troubles of this world and that in you we find joy and love and comfort. 
And we thank you for all of these things. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope you join me this uh, Sunday so we can share a little bit about our mission trip and a little bit about uh, our vision for our youth program going forward. Uh, again, I'm going to have some time to talk at uh, all three services this weekend. That's Friday or sorry, Saturday at five and then Sunday morning at uh, 1030 and eight. So hope to see you there. Thanks. Bye. Have a good night.